Okay, so dBeaver. Who here has used it before? Perfect. That is exactly the audience I wanted. So my name is Clayton Flesher. I work at Hague Software. We're a DevOps and integration consultancy. So if you need any of your development operationalized or any of your operations developmentalized or anything integrated, come talk to us. We uh, have an office here at Starspace. Uh, so what is dBeaver? Uh, dBeaver is a database tool for interacting with a number of different, uh, mainly relational databases, yay, this crowd. And, but it also uh, deals with some other things. Uh, it's free and open source, which is more yay. And it is multi-platform. We'll go over what, what that means here in a little bit. Uh, and it's extensible with Java plugins. So if you wanna develop for it, you can. And it supports any database with a JDBC driver and it supports a number of other data sources without. And it works on this stuff. So this is all of us, right? Nobody here has any, is running anything that isn't one of those. Windows, Linux, Mac, or Solaris. Uh, these are the relational databases it supports. I'll give you a second to look over those. Anybody here running any relational databases that isn't one of these? So MySQL, Postgres, yay Postgres. Um, yeah, SQL Server, SQLite. I'm a, if, you, if you could tell, I'm a Ruby guy, so I, those are what I have experience with. But uh, yeah, that supports all of those. And it has enterprise and community editions. Don't get scared, they're both free. Um, the difference is that the Enterprise Edition supports MongoDB and Cassandra as well. So if you have some evil, evil JavaScript people at your company who need to do Mongo database connections, uh, they can still use dBeaver. And um, the reason it's Enterprise is because the Mongo and Cassandra drivers, they're free, but they're not open source. So they created an Enterprise release. It took me a while to figure out why there were two. Mongo database connections is one of the, so this is one of the things it can do, or manage database connections that supports SSH, socks. Uh, you can set up uh, shell commands to execute before and after your database connection. Uh, you can set up bootstrap queries. Uh, it automatically by default has different kinds of connections out of the box for like, you, do you want to do auto commits? You want to have different color schemes and that kind of thing. You can also create your own custom connection types, and it has source control through Eclipse plugins. So it's pretty full featured. Uh, let's get to what it, the fun stuff. You can actually manage your data with it. Um, you can view database metadata, such as tables, views, columns, anything that's in your metadata. It has, uh, you can edit your metadata, anything that's editable. Um, allows you to create queries and view them in different presentation styles. This is what the data layer does. This isn't what the, the SQL layer does. You can do, you can have, you can like create, you can do a query and say, give it back to me in a, in a JSON data structure or an XML data structure, something useful like that. Um, Bob and Club support. You can actually highlight some rows and have it automatically generate SQL for you based on the rows you highlighted. And, the, and then, um, it also has a bunch of specific database. So like there's specific stuff for Postgres, there's specific stuff for MySQL that is on top of the generalized support. So if you get into looking on the website, uh, the dBeaver website, they, they have some like, here's some features that are above and beyond for these particular heavily used database systems. So the SQL editor itself um, has a scripts folder for saving and editing SQL scripts. It's got syntax highlighting. It supports import and export scripts, um, dynamic perimeter bindings, has auto completion for, from metadata, SQL keywords, and anything that you've already entered as an identifier. So that's pretty nice when you start uh, getting complicated queries, it will help you out with auto completion. Uh, hyperlinks to object editor, and it has built-in custom templates for frequently used SQL code. 
or built-in and custom templates. You can, it has some built-in templates for like common kinds of SQL queries, and then you can build your own custom templates as well. So um, some of you may have used DataGrip before. Anybody in here use DataGrip? Okay, I see at least one hand, so the slide's not entirely useless. Um, DataGrip is a, is a common uh, multi-database interaction tool that's uh, paid. DBeaver's free, so I'm gonna give in some comparisons between the two. DataGrip's uh, $200 a year, that's the cheapest first year option. You could also do $20 a month. Um, it's 159 the second and 119 every year after that. Um, DataGrip has a lot cleaner user interface, but uh, like I said, DBeaver's free. And uh, SQL is primarily what you do work with, and you're not just using one database at your company if you're at a company. So the reason I discovered DBeaver is because the last job I had before this one, we had in production five different database systems, one of which went back to the 1980s. Um, so we were doing Postgres, we had uh, something called Ctree, we were doing Mongo, um, I think we had some MySQL wandering around, and a couple, I mean, some of you are horrified at that, at all this, but yeah, that was, that was how it was. And um, so DBeaver came in super handy, especially the Mongo side of it, because having something that interacts with Postgres, MySQL, and MongoDB all through the same interface was really nice. Um, if you're primarily a DBA, you either use the tool for, your, for the primary database that you're interacting with, or if you have a bunch of databases, you, uh, DataGrip might be good for you. But if you're not a DBA, if you're like me and you're a developer, SQL isn't what you do all day. Um, DBeaver more than fulfill your needs, and it's free, and I highly recommend you use it. Um, to finish up, uh, we'll do some other comparable options. I went on, I found a comparison of database tools on Wikipedia. It's not entirely up to date. But uh, the, some of the other options that were comparable was uh, Orbata, I guess that's how you say it. It uh, has some similar features, but it's not being actively updated. And I think it's written, intended for a Polish audience. Um, so if, you, if you're Polish and you like read whatever the primary language is in Poland, then I guess Polish. Uh, and then Squirrel SQL Client has similar features and it also supports MongoDB. Doesn't uh, support Cassandra, I, I don't think. It doesn't have a driver for that. But those are both also ones, if for some reason you don't like DBeaver and you still wanna go the free route, those are some good options. And uh, if I have any time, I'll take a couple of questions before I run off. Yes? So I think it'll tell you if your query is malformed, but I don't know if it has formatting. Like, I'm not sure what you mean by... Formatting like, like the one line, probably on another line, kind of the way the query flow versus the rest of it. Um, I don't think it does that. You'd have to dig it. To be honest with you, so I don't use DB for every day because I'm not do, using it at my job right now. So it's been a while since I've heavily used it. I just happen to have used it and know that it would be a good tool for some of you guys to know about. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Let me go back to my first slide here. I should have put it on in the last slide too. Sorry. There we go. There you go. And it is a Java-based um, tool. M almost all of the good multi uh, database systems are Java based. So if you for some reason can't have Java in your stack, which I don't know why you wouldn't, but. All right, I'm gonna get off here and let, you, let the next person come up.